All right. So, hey, everyone. Happy March. Nice to see warmer weather out there. Hopefully that's, you know, snow goes away and we uh, we don't see any more for the, for the remainder of the year. That'd be awesome. Um, so, all right, let's go through the agenda. So on the agenda, obviously, we've got uh, some good projects going on. Um, uh, we'll go through minutes and then the email, pro uh, the database project, uh, some great work there uh, between Mike, um, Sid and Bob. Uh, we'll talk about broadband. There's some work that's been happening there and then want to chat about um, uh, website enhancements. Uh, and then of course, any other topics anyone else wants to bring up. Um, so why don't we just start uh, first thing is just to um, review an approval of the minutes from February. Um, do I have a motion to approve? Motion to approve, Anna-Marie. All right, and Jeff, I will second it. So all in favor? Aye. Aye. I'm always right. in favor. Yeah. <laughs> all right, so we, we approve the minutes. Um, so let's jump in. There's a lot of um, great work that's been doing around, you know, database and all that. Um, and, you know, a lot of, I, there was some, you know, a lot of detail that was flying around. So, uh, you know, would love to get an update. Um, so Mike and, and Bob, if I could ask the two of you uh, to give us updates, sounds like a lot of good progress over the last month. Sure, and, and Bob, if you want to give a little bit of the detail, I can, um, and give the team a little bit of the detail first, I can kind of bring it up to a higher level as well, if you'd love. Sure, go ahead. Oh, you want me no, to go first? Yeah, 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 if you want to okay. start. I think you've been talking to Sid a little more yeah. than I have lately, so. Yeah, I've been talking to, I've, Sid and I have been going back and forth. Um, he, he sent us some of the data, and just to reiterate, we're trying to eliminate duplicates. We have information all over the place. We're trying to eliminate duplicates. And we're also trying to set our system up for uh, an automated process to keep our list current um, once we, we get it. Uh, Sid took all of our data, put it together, and in his, I think it's called Python? Yep. yep. Yeah, Python, um, put it together. And then when I saw it come back, it, you know, there were a number of items to make it more useful. So I documented it for him, which he found helpful. And uh, we went through it in detail together. Uh, I owe him one more piece of information now. If he'd like to see the best format that we would like to get right. uh, as, as an output. So it's really a, a terrific uh, working with him and it's coming forward. And uh, someone came into my office the other day looking for some contact information and i said well let me go here and i <laughs> and i went there and and by gosh you know it's not in the format we want but we got the information right, right. so that was encouraging good mm -hmm. yeah i think we're very close actually and yeah. Bob, thanks yeah. thanks for the partnership um you know i know jeff you're a great guy questions. to work with yeah he is he's phenomenal i had lunch with him a couple of weeks ago actually um he, he's again he does this for the 90 million customers that we have at synchrony so uh, he loved this project because it's even more data to, to crack through. Um, Jeff, I think you had a question regarding kind of upkeep and, and would the code sort of be able to be run on our servers here in New Canaan as opposed to kind of sending the files back and forth between SID? And the answer is yes. Um, but we would have a couple of requirements. Um, obviously, we would need um, the ability to run the Python code and we need Anaconda, which is a software uh, that would actually sit on our servers as well. With that combination of those two pieces of software, we would actually be able to run the updates. Um, and so we can work with Sid to figure out if, if, if um, you know, the folks who we work with um, who manage the, the servers and the databases um, to get that code downloaded. Uh, I believe there is a cost. We have to figure out what that is, but it's, not, it, it's, it's de minimis. It's not huge. Um, and then we would be able to update it. We wouldn't even, you know, Sid would sort of give that to us and then it would end up being ours to use. The code would be ours to use over time. And that would be working through Chris. Yes, exactly, exactly. So, and Sid's happy to work with Chris in terms of the tech requirements and all that kind of yeah. stuff. But uh, it, it actually literally would be just just kind of hitting enter to rerun the code uh, every month, every quarter, whenever we want to do it, as long as we have those software packages. When you say run, what are we running on to extract? 
Well, we were extracting from the different databases that we had, right? So right. we're not, the there's, nice there's thing about like this is we're not changing. What's that? There's like 11 of them floating out there. I'm just curious to which ones you're focusing on now. Yeah, I, I, and Bob may be able, Bob will probably speak better to which ones are most valuable. But the nice thing about this process is we're not changing the way data gets ingested by each of those 11. We're not suggesting any changes to that. So think of just, right. about just a, appending a file and being able to run this code over the top of it. I'm, I'm not sure which one of the specific databases are more valuable than others. Well, what but that's what we mean by update. What are we running it on now first? I mean, Oh, short term, we actually sent the data to, we sent all the different data to Sid. Sid wrote the code and was running on his local computer. No, that's all that I meant. I mean, which of the town's databases are we extracting from? Oh, Columbus? yeah, go ahead, Paul. Paul can answer that better than I can. Uh, Bob, yeah. We're, we're, uh, we're, we're using a number of them. The, the, the most important one we're using right now is uh, the voter registration list, which is basically mm -hmm. public information. That's new news. And, uh, so we use that, that's, and that's one that uh, gets updated constantly. And the other important one that we're using is the uh, assessor's database, which is properties. And, and the issue we have there is the assessor will have one property that could have multiple buildings on it. For example, the new project, The View, which has one property address, but there's going to be 110 mailing addresses. So we had to pull, pull that down and sort that through. Well, thank you. That was my question really, because there were so many discussions in the past about pulling from uh, parking databases or other databases that we have so you're, you're finding these to be the most productive, I think, is what you're saying. Yeah, and, yeah. and, and then there's some others that are, you know, with, with the public information. Um, and we found a, a more efficient way through Chris's group uh, to work with the data in a secure basis back and forth to uh, Sid. Yeah, now I had a question about the security. There's like a, a script living on the server um, so I'm assuming Chris is fine with that in terms of security. Yeah, Chris, we'll figure it out when, once we get it all down and working, we'll figure out the, uh, yeah, the security parameters. If we got to lock it down to where we put it out to something that's not on the network whatsoever. And it's, uh, what they call sandboxed on its own. And that's what we'll do. We access list and write security for everything that goes on here. Even the cameras. Yeah, and I, I know you stuff. do. And, you know, it's yeah. just more of a, just, yep. you know. A question. It's public, it's, it's public information data, just it's all in one place. So we're not going to give it gift it to anyone. Yeah. Yep. And uh, at first we were sending it through a fob and where you had it. I'd give it to Mike, Mike get it to Sid. So one of Chris's team members helped me out uh, last week, uh, Tim Malley. And uh, we have a secure way of doing it. So I don't, I, I told Sid, so I don't have to meet you on a street corner somewhere. <laughs> Yeah, you know, in a dark <laughs> exactly. alley. <laughs> exactly. Yeah, yeah. And eventually, the, the good news is that process goes away because we'll be running the code on our servers. Yeah. So, yeah. The, Chris, the the Python and what was the other software you said? Anaconda. Yeah, Chris, do we use um, any of those for any other purpose? Uh, no, we used Python to write a little bit of code for the PD uh, a year ago, but because everybody has their own. Um, software vendors. We don't go out and write code for the particular departments. Okay, uh, so Anaconda is front end um, and P Python, of course, back end, right? That's what it sounds Anac like. Anaconda is like-, like Py is Python's your database and then Anaconda would bring it to the, the front before- Okay, but they have- Right, that's my that. understanding as well. Yeah, yeah. and yeah. what I can do, Henry, is have um, Sid write this out, what the process will be. Yeah, uh, and, and kind of the connections in the front end, back end concept you're describing, so that we can look at it and review it and, and hand it to Chris. Yeah, yeah it's not a trust issue. I'm asking for curiosity. I just, you know, want to know. Sure. Yeah. They like reptiles. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> like the, the viper. What's next? <laughs> so when it goes through that cleansing, where does it sit somewhere? So you went through and you mashed it all up. Where does that? final 
output sit? Uh, in, a ne in another file. Think of it as a new tab. Yeah. Okay. Uh, yeah. In wait, you're saying in each one of those databases or? No, no, no. Think of all the databases conglomerating to one tab. Okay. And that's where it then sits. Yeah. Okay. As I understand, it'll just be cleaning it all up and they'll have one nice Excel file. Exactly. Okay. So it's, it's, it's the, the consolidated shows up in Excel. Yeah. And. Or any, any comma delimited right. file with rows and columns. Yes. Right, right, right. Okay. Yes. All right. Um, so what, so what's next steps? Um, is there, yeah, what, what else is next? Next step is I'm I'll put together in a detail what we would, how we would like to see the file displayed and then Sid and I will talk and he'll see what he can do or can't do and then it'll be done. Just right. get all done. Excellent. Are you um, planning to do it with any of the other databases available uh, at the town? Yes. Yeah, we're, we're looking at, at some of the other ones. Sorry, Tim Malley just called me for an issue. What was that, Paul? I'm sorry. There's obviously going to be diminishing returns when you start going to other databases, no question. Right. But there could be some stuff that, that pops up that'd be useful. Yeah. Yeah. And we're talking to some of the other people here. And is the core element that's really that most valuable is email? I mean, is that what, so that we can communicate, we know that we're communicating once or what, what do we think? Well, it's, it's knowing, it's knowing that we have a contact, a point of a, a contact piece of data email for every resident in town, yep. which can work with the Everbridge program. So when we're trying to geofence or notify people, we'll know that we have the right person uh, in that residence. So we're thinking we, when we get that file is to ingest it into Everbridge as one as- That one would be one, one use of it. Yeah, one use. It yeah, Earth. I think there's a lot of different, Bob, that's exactly right. There's a lot of different use cases. We haven't you know, kind of thought through that in detail. I know Kevin's been very high in it, but there's lots of potential use cases. Again, we're not changing the piping of how we get this information from our residents. It's all gonna come in the same way it comes in today, but now it's conglomerated into a file. And now you think about potential future use cases, we should probably think about that a little bit more. Right. There's, there's probably more than we think. Um, you know, Bob, you just mentioned people walking in the door and saying, yeah. hey, I need information for this person, right? There's probably yeah. lots of other use cases that we can think about. Right, right. right. I mean, we're more efficient. You, last year, we worked by hand, uh, trying to get email for people uh, to just send notification out about the transfer station, how we were going to do that. This year, they're working, uh, Chris is working, excuse me, uh, Tim Malley, who works for Chris, and the parking uh, department are working on semi-automating uh, the parking renewal and sailing, uh, selling, and selling of the passes in a more efficient way. Yeah. Bob, you know, what would be interesting, and, and Jeff, I asked for the whole committee's thought on this, but when we've done, when I've done this in the past, sometimes visually, it, it actually becomes more real than what we're yeah. talking about. So maybe next month we can, Bob, we can, you and I can work together and walk through a page That's or two of, of, of the process, the inputs, and then what the output looks like. Yeah. And then if we did that, I think people's, you know, people start thinking about, wow, this, this could be really important in ways we hadn't thought about before, but it may start with that kind of visual for everybody right. to understand what we've done. Right. That's it's, good idea. Yeah. It's really efficient communication with, with the, our residents. Well, and I think if you're, if you're getting close to the end of the first phase, right, then mm -hmm. Mike, to your point is let's see it. And then you yeah, brainstorm of what are those other solutions? And then, right. you know, let's pursue them or work with the town to pursue, you know, each of them. Because yeah, now that you have it, let's not just, you know, um, let's, let's maximize it to our, to its yeah. full potential. On That's right. Side. And, and, oh, go ahead. Go Sorry. Ahead. Go ahead, Mike. No, I was just going to say that the, the, when we think about, you know, either companies work for, 
this is the foundation of a single sign-on process. Right, right. So in the long run, you start to think about other, some of other Kevin's things that Kevin has been thinking about. Um, you can't do any of that without this foundation, so. Yeah. Yeah, that's good. No, I was, I was gonna say on the side, uh, last month we talked about the um, parking permit renewal process. Does anybody, is Chris on the lines? Anybody know what the, what the progress on that has been? I have not been privy to that, Paul. I've been on five other projects, my friend. And to be honest, the last uh, we discussed or was discussed for my, my staff was that uh, they were kind of automated the way they were already prior to, which is uh, you going out and doing a survey or gathering email addresses from uh, the people that are on the list and then doing their mass email out to say, who, you know, if, who, when, what, or how, but I've not heard anything from Stacy since. Yeah. I, uh, Chris, I, I've worked with uh, uh, Tim the last couple of days uh, because he did get his data dump from them. And we had a couple of issues. We had to figure out how to sort the data to get it in the right format for him. And then uh, the letter that had been uh put together from the vendor uh, really wasn't workable. So, so Chris, uh, not Chris, Tim had to wrestle with it and he put it in a good format uh, today. And uh, in fact, we were talking about it this morning. So he's moving closer on that. Okay, thanks. thanks. Um, all right, any other, no, this is great, great progress. And I think um, the next steps sound great as far as next month. I think that would be a next, um, yeah, a great discussion. Very good suggestion to, uh, let's see, a little bit of a picture as to what it's now looking at. Because it, it's starting to gel. Yeah. This yeah. has been a, a an amorphous discussion in many ways. Sometimes the only person who really had his hands on it was Bob and now yourself. It's starting to come together. It's very yeah. good. And it, it really was when, when Mike introduced Sid to the process and all, it, it really took on life. Mm -hmm. Yeah, well, Bob, you've been really helpful. So thank you very much. It's been a great partnership. Yeah. Awesome. I'm uh, from the government. I'm here to help. <laughs> <laughs> uh, all right. Any other questions, thoughts around uh, database project? I think. Uh, yeah, really good discussion. Okay. Um, so next on the, the agenda that I had was broadband internet. Um, if you remember, this is, you know, there are, um, throughout town, different people have, um, have been complaining about um, optimum internet service. And so uh, Kevin and Tucker really, you know, uh, with Tucker, I guess, is, is leading it is to try to figure out what options, what do we have available? Um, and so the first thing they did is they've, they had calls with um, uh, Frontier and with Optimum or Altice. And so I think the Frontier call, and I'm recapping from last month, was Frontier, as far as putting in fiber into the town, is not, you know, for at fiber to the home, is not something they're, they're pursuing at this time in New Canaan. That could always change. But um, they're not, you know, that's not where their priority is, even though we know from Chris that uh, Frontier is putting fiber in towns um, up in closer to New Haven. So anyway, so it sounds like they, you know, it's not really an option for us to help, you know, any people, especially with more people now working from home and people moving in, you know, expecting better internet service than um, what people are facing today. And it's spotty. I think some places are better than others. Um, so that was number one. Number two was a call with Altice, or actually there were two calls. Um, and the second one, so I attended that, which was um, including their engineers, and was was interesting to find out that Altice has been running fiber throughout New Canaan, and right now they quoted that they think about sixty to seventy percent of the homes in New Canaan um, are able to get fiber today, um, which was surprising because you know, Kevin said they never this, told anybody exactly. That's the best kept secret known to man, like. Are you not telling anybody? Um, and interesting enough, if you go onto their website, so if you go to optimum.com forward slash internet, um, it is a page for new customers. 
and it's actually very well laid out. It's very easy. And I saw that and I said, all right, I'm gonna, oh, you, and there's an address field. You type in your address and it'll tell you whether Fiverr is available at your home. And it's not, it's not like just because you have it, someone down the road, you know, a couple streets over would have it. It's very, it seems a little bit spotty where it is, but clearly they're at, you know, 60 to 70% now. Um, so the, their focus is on new customers. So if you move into New Canaan, they're more likely to just install fiber in your home um, versus the regular traditional coax cable uh, for internet and TV. Even if there is coax there, they will upgrade because their goal is to move everyone over to fiber. At least that's what they, they state. Um, and I believe it because they wanna move everyone off the older technology, but they realize that's gonna be a long uh, process, right? Because many people aren't gonna change for any number of reasons. Number one, number two, it's a long process to um, install. It takes like four hours to install fiber at a home. Um, and so that's not, you know, it's for a technician, they can do two in a day versus installing traditional coax cable. You know, I don't know how many, but they can do many in a day because, you know, they're just hooking into an existing line, those kind of things. Um, so, so a couple of things. One is, yeah, it seems like the best kept secret. So Kevin was like, well, um, you know, we'd love to let residents know this. Um, my experience, so I, so I took one for the team and I, I got Optimum to upgrade my cable to uh, fiber, my internet and TV. Um, and the four hours here was, okay, I didn't expect they were gonna be here four hours, so I didn't know that, but had I known that it would've been fine. I spent two hours outside the house on the pole, but um, that wasn't the problem. The problem was going through the call center. It was, it was excruciating for me to get to the right people. They transferred me four times, all of that, in order to get someone. And they ended up sending me to the retention team, which is the only place that can actually make this change. I'm not looking to cancel my service. I was just looking to change. So I think um, it's great that we have it. So that's sort of, there's an you know, option out there. But for, exist for new customers, it seems very straightforward. Go to the website, sign up. That seems pretty clean. For existing customers, it is anything but. Yeah, welcome to hell. Yeah. Okay, so how would you how would you compare your previous service and now this fiber service? Um, so, well, from speed, I do have the one gig service now, which I had I think four hundred before. So I'm getting much faster um, speeds in the house. Um, it has dropped a couple times, which to um, the, you know my wife wasn't too happy one drop today for like five minutes. But once again, I don't, you know, I've had drops on the old system. So I don't know if this is, you know, that much different, but I would but say- Jeff, yeah, this... when it drops, does the TV drop too? Yeah, she checked yeah, the TV. Yeah, that's interesting. Yeah, that's different, right? Right. Um, now what, you know, I sort of, uh, I caused myself a little pain personally because um, the way they do it is they bring fiber to the, to the modem and then the TVs are all are broadcasted via Wi-Fi or their own, you know, their own system. So it's all wireless. So they put a box under the TV, um, and but that's wireless. There's no, there's no, you know, cable, fiber cables throughout the house. So um, I have um, my walls have plaster. Some of the walls are plaster. So I have Wi-Fi issues to begin with. So that's caused a little bit of an issue, at least to one TV in my house. But you know, they gave me an extender and. I'm still working through that. But um, short of that, you know, so far I would say, you know, it's it's pretty good. Um, but, you know, I, I'll let you know if I run into more issues of everything dropping. Yeah, Sounds we like we don't even point. have TV. I mean, it's just when nobody watches cable. So, so it would be just for internet and I can't, but I mean, based on your experience, I'm not sure. Well, yeah, and it is relatively new service. So I knew I'm risking that. And the technician said that. He said, yeah, no, it's good, but you know, it's new and it's got its, its issues, but the old system has issues, you know, so he, he admitted on both. Um, but obviously I was assuming they're gonna continue to invest in this because this is where, you know, they're putting new, new people on all the time, right? So, uh, but anyway, it was, you know, interesting process <laughs> to go through. I said, you know, I would not recommend anyone try it unless, you, unless you're really running into ish internet issues to try to deal with the, um, the headache of going through the call center. 
Um, the woman from Altice was on the call. I explained the experience that I had on the call center. Um, and she was like, I'll look into it. I'm going to give her, send her a more detail to say, look, you know, it's uh, Tucker was saying, look, you know, on New Canaan Moms, the Facebook group, like people, you know, complain every now and then about their internet service. It's easy to put out a message and get people to, you know, or in multiple different ways, right? Through the newspaper, or whatever, people to say, oh, you know, this higher speeds are available or better service, but we don't, we wouldn't want to do that because we're just sending people to a really horrible, you know, call center experience. So that's was my, that's my message to Why all teams. Why do you have today. to deal with the call center? Um, I mean, I, I dealt with the call center. In fact, my 2020 experience with the call center would be the subject of a book if I had the time and <laughs> took the trouble. But really, why did you have to deal with them in, at all? Well, or so was other, interesting. Was so it a good. billing issue to get it to get them to change your billing? Because that so, that's what you usually get redirected over there for. Yeah. Um, well, so I went to the website and I. And I was like, oh, this looks good. And I saw the promotional pricing and I thought, oh, well, I wonder if they're going to give it to me. I typed in my address and I submitted all the information. And I hit send and it was like, great. And I, can, I picked when the technician can come to my house. I was like, man, this is easy. And then submit. And they said, great, the technician will be there on Tuesday. And then within 24 hours, I get an email from Altice that says, thank you for your order, but uh, you're an existing customer. So you need to call this number, which is just the general number. So like, you know, like if they had just created a, a existing customer screen, right? Because all I did all it is I was selecting what services. It was pretty easy. It was pretty clear what the service options were. Um, but uh, yeah, then it was. Now, one of the technicians said there's a lot they have to do in the background. They have to assign which actual fiber line is yours. There's, like, there's actually a bunch of technical stuff, but I don't know why that should affect me, right? Like all no, I want to do is tell you, this is what I want. I'll sign up for this service and when I want the tech to come out. So, uh, but yeah. A, user interface on their website is horrendous. And it says, it says the company that runs like, like they ran 30 years ago, like yeah. internet, like, oh, internet. <laughs> yeah. They have a list in the background. Says, you have a, your existing customer means you haven't experienced enough pain with our customer service. So we're going to require you to go through customer service to get this thing set up. Right. Yeah, it wasn't painful enough. No. Yeah, it wasn't painful enough. Yeah. But um, now on the new customer side, I was thinking, oh, well, now is for a, if you're a realtor in town, provided you do this correctly, you could, if when you're selling a house, go onto the site, validate that the house that has fiber, that's the key point. You could put it on the listing, you know, this of uh, when a 1G fiber service available. Sure. You know, um, it would certainly be a, a way to promote, uh, regardless of whether Darien or any other town. Yeah, it's helpful. Yeah. 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 It, it looks like a differentiator, or at least, you know, for those people coming out of New York City or wherever who, you know, is accustomed to faster services. So we, we started discussing this a few, money, a few meetings ago. And, and for some of us, the point was, affordable, acceptable uh, broadband service for especially families that you know, have kids that are now at home and it's expensive and available or questionably unavailable. But there's been nothing done to uh, deal with that part of, the, of their customer base. Yeah, it's a good question. I mean, do they... I'm not asking them to give it away for free, but I mean, they're, they're making no effort as far as I can tell, to deal with the, the people who, frankly, I mean, everyone on this call has every option for upgrading their service. Right. But, you know, I don't have three kids at home and uh, 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 a wife who's out of a job and I'm trying to figure out what kind of broadband service I should have. Right. That's the, that's the need. The need is not for, you know, fiber optic gigabit service. I mean, that's lovely, but just like everything else in this town, that's um, that's you know, a very high class problem. Yeah. Not, yeah, it's not a, just in your town, Paul. I've got it over here as well. What what do you have? You got no good service for the, the, the bulk of people who frankly need yeah. it? T-Mobile's got 5G antennas a block from me. 
they swear 5G in your home. Okay, great. They said, I, I'm in. Let me try it. I had them send me the home home internet device they have. Thing ran 90 meg. I'm like, I'm pulling more than that with my cable modem. <laughs> wow. Where's your 5G? Oh, uh, well, we haven't really turned it up yet. <laughs> <laughs> but my zip code passed. Okay. So that yeah. went back in the box. <laughs> They're all doing it. They're all doing it. it it's, it's until they have true 5G throughout New England. Uh, and you may be closer in New Canaan than I would be up here in New Haven County. Uh, Orange is just at the tip of the end of, or we are the end of life uh, cable vision, optimum. But it's ever since Altice took them over. Yeah. Um, Paul, you, you bring up a good point, which is, you know, what is their, um, or the focus has been on, all right, for people who are, you know, now with everybody home and people working from home, trying to make sure they have enough service and they're, Kevin and Tucker are getting the calls from people are like, my service is down, I can't work from home or I can't do whatever. Yeah, I wanted. Uh, I was hoping that Tucker and, and Kevin would be here because I'd like to bug them about this. This it's not it's not simply the availability of you know gigabit fiber optic service. It's a lot of people in town that need the service. Right. Uh, but quite frankly you know if our my service drops it's not that i'm gonna call like first selectman about it i mean it's like yeah. why would people it's like but i think it's calling it's, a police well, well because you have get internet. absolutely no if you call if you call altice cable vision you'll get no no <laughs> satisfaction i think that's why ever yeah anna marie i get them at my desk and i have no idea what do you want me to drive out to your house and climb the pole <laughs> <laughs> What would you like to do for your internet? For I don't provide you the service, but I would love to listen. Yeah. But, but I think that's it. Yeah, to, to Paul's point, they you know they just don't um, look. And, I mean, they just aren't getting response, so they're calling anybody. So hey, Bob, yeah. you've got a Bob's got his hand. Just just I, I mean I think the biggest issue really is the poor customer service. Um, I I had to deal with them last year for four months. And I, I was on my way to the closed Norwalk office that they insisted was just reopened. Um, and when I got to the office, it's still closed. I just laughed and said, this service is so bad. It has to be intentional. You cannot give this bad service because that office sent me to Bridgeport with two signs on the door due to COVID we're open Monday to Friday, <laughs> nine to five. The other sign said, due to COVID, this office is closed. And the office was closed. It, it cannot, it, I'm, I come out of a customer service industry. I was customer service my whole life. You can't give this bad service unless it really is intentional. Um, so I think a couple things here. One Sorry. Is yeah, no, 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 it's a good point. So a couple, you know, well, one is, is the customer service. Like, look, if you want people to do anything here, you know, and by the way, yeah, to, to Chris's point, if 5G service comes to New Canaan, that may take some of your customers, may, who knows. Um, but, you know, you've got, you know, we're, you've got to improve what you're, what you're doing. Um, so I think that's message one. I can pass that back to, to Kevin and Tucker. They know it, but just reinforce that yeah. we think that's number one issue. And, um, oh, and then the second thing is Paul, your point about, yeah, lower income, that's a great point. Like what, uh, you know, their kids are at home, um, you know, they're working from home, they can't go to their office or whatever work they do. And um, so I think that's important, like that's great because the, the new services are expensive. You know, it's a um, it's hundred, the gig services retail is $140 a month. $39 a month, but they give you like <laughs> all of these credits on it, right? Um, I mean, I gave me promotional pricing for a year as well as a $200 gift card. So like, you know, it's sort of crazy what they were doing, but, um, you know, fully recognize in my mind that, all right, that's going to be a steep bill, you know, come a year from now. And do I really want to pay for that high of service? The but this card, card money of customer service. I mean, it, yeah. it really is just, you know, which which of these promotions do you think you're going to ever see again? Right. Um, well, even the the person who to, to, uh, salesperson who finally helped me or the person, the uh, customer service person said, 
I said, oh, is this good for a year? And she said, yeah, yeah, but call back in, in you know, 11 months and we'll give you a new promotion. Right. I don't know if that's true, but it was that just- Yeah, but remember to call, me. otherwise it'll go like, to, I don't know, sky high, you know, yeah. like all of a sudden your, your bill is three times yeah. the amount. Right. Okay, but the question is, I mean, we all complain and we all acknowledge that it's a bad service. Can town of New Canaan as, as an inst institution, like do something about it? Like try to look for alternative private providers or like is, is like, are we just stuck with them? So um, the, what a couple towns, Ridgefield is one of them, is actually looking at the concept of a private network, right? Where they go off and create their own. Mm -hmm. That is a, you know, a, a huge undertaking, right? Because somebody, that would mean laying your own fiber wire around or, or putting it, hanging it on the poles, right? And, and doing all that. And now you're in competition with it. So um, I think that that's, um, while some other towns are looking at that and certainly something that New Canaan can look at, I think that's a, you know, now you're in the, the business of running utility, right? Um, but there is, like I said, there are a few towns around us that are looking at that concept. So I know Tucker and Kevin have been in discussion with them just at a high level to see what you know, the concept is. Um, I think once again, the hard part is in order to make those work, um, I talked to the guy in Ridgefield, you need about 30% take rate. So 30% of your, to, like in their, simple, their basic um, business case for it, in order to make it work with all the factors they put in, you need 30, at least 30% of your residents to take up the service to break even. Otherwise the town is, you know, is, is subsidizing and then it becomes a real, you know, um, cost issue. So I that's think it's the, actually a low percentage. You know, like 30% is pretty low, I would say. Agreed, um, if there's not alternatives out there. And the alternative of course is what everyone already has, which is Altice, right? So you'd have to get a high percentage of them just to say enough, you know, and leave. Um, in order to, and, and maintain, not only leave, but maintain with it, right? So um, uh, anyway, it's a, a, you know, it's certainly, it's certainly a, a, an option out there. I think you're going to see more and more providers in New Canaan. Um, in the past year, Sprint not only is, were the first to put up the uh, mini cells along on the back hall of Altice, Verizon is pulling fiber throughout your town too, quite extensively. The letter went out last year that it was for commercial use, only at that point, and everybody knows what that means. As soon as it goes by everybody's street, they're going to make connectivity, and then they're going to turn it into residential. Um, but that'll bring at least two more providers to you guys. <clears throat> I have looked. Verizon? I've, Verizon, yes. I've looked into um, just what Kevin. Actually, I was telling Kevin and, and Tucker about what they're talking about, and sat in on a, a, a internet conference in Hartford last year. Uh, Manchester, West Hartford, I think it was uh, Sharon. They all went into kind of a, um, uh, I thought that they were pulling their own fiber. They weren't, they got hooked up with, I think it's called New Country or New, New County. Um, I'd have to get the name to be correct. But um, so I called them out and, and wanted to know how we, if, if New Canaan was looking to become not their own provider, but at least find someone to go do this for them. Uh, and basically these people go out and just find someone that's already pulled fiber or would be willing to pull fiber and to Jeff's point at a percentage per household and has to be signed up first. So you can find these firms to do it, but there's a lot of legwork. So that's why people, towns end up going with someone else with it because it is, you have to, there's a bunch of FCC. There's, there's all sorts of stuff that you never think about. Um, but I will say, I think you're going to see more providers pop up in your area, at least, because I, I've already seen all the fiber trucks out there. So you, in that case, would it be just hypothetically Verizon would would provide, like Altice, would provide fiber right to the home? Uh, either that or they would go fiber to coax. There's three different flavors the way fiber gets to you. I'm surprised Altice is actually pulling fiber from the poles because it all goes back to the same switching. That's why you're you're... TVs will stutter and your internet will go down. Um, they run either fiber, fiber to you, coax to you, or they do what's called an ethernet handoff or hand or drop. And um, so in any case, it could be any one of those, right? If they put the fiber modules on the poles, 
uh, and then run Ethernet to your house if you're close enough, or if they run coax because they can run um, fiber over coax as well. Um, then yes, that's that's their their alternative or their their um, end game is to to increase speed and to collect customers. Hmm. So I'm guessing it's going to be FiOS, unless Altis. I know they have Xfinity, which is a Comcast product. Um, they're not in your area, but if Verizon is able to pull fiber throughout there. I'm not sure how they're going to, how they would do it, but I'm pretty sure I'm, I'm guessing they're going to start to, to come to the residential end of it. Well, that certainly but, would, that certainly would wake up all teeth. That's for sure. Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. You know, you know and, and then now you've got a bargaining chip. Well, I could go with AT&T now too, or frontier. Sorry. They're, they pulled fiber. So I don't really need you. Right. And to Anna Maria's point, a lot of households, including my own, I don't use conventional TV. I stream everything. Uh, I cut the cord five years ago. So you, if you could give me the gig and you could tell me that it's going to be 99% uptime, I'm in. You know, I, I, I'd definitely give it a whirl. The only problem that New Canaan has, and I'm going to point this out as your geographical area, is their fibers in the air. So if a tree hits and takes down the coax, it's taking the fiber with it. Right. You know, that's, that's, that's the point of it. it it's, you're going to pay for better, faster speeds, but in, in case of a storm, you're going to be out like anybody else. Right. And fibers lit from way back where, you know, you've got to put, um, you had to put light down the glass. So if it, it could break anywhere, you know, it's, it's a great, it's a wonderful idea and a great concept. It's just, it's not underground. Right. No, well, the business is changing. There's no question about it. Yeah. Uh, lots and lots of people are, dropping cable TV, obviously, and going to YouTube TV, Sling, other alternatives. Because, because why, you know, it's you can see everything you want, basically, from YouTube, and then you can no, cherry, no, cherry pick no, no, anything, no. you know, you want to see. You know, you don't have to pay for all these channels that you never watch. You just pick the shows. Anna Marie, the silver bullet in this area is that nobody except Cablevision provides SNY. Uh, or, or the SNY. A lot SNY. of people don't want YouTube TV because it doesn't have the Yankees, the Yankees network. SNY is not only the Mets network, which nobody cares about. <laughs> SNY is a source of UConn women's <laughs> basketball. <laughs> And I would not have cable service, TV service, if it were not for the fact that they are the only provider of television on a streaming or you know, cable basis that provide that's delivering SNY. Yeah. If you didn't, well, if, if you were the S network, that, that kind of sounds like a personal problem. To me. <laughs> yeah. It's a personal problem. They're all personal problems. When you yeah, look at I'm going to call on this one. Yeah, the S network is a, is a, is a must have. Yeah. Yeah. See, is uh, Mike Abbott went to <laughs> he went to a streaming service, Fubu TV, and he got rid of his cable boxes. And he was trying to convince me, and I said, Mike, this sounds great. Um, and I looked at the list, and I said, Where's Yes Network? And he said, Oh, it's not on there. And yeah. I said, That's a that's a deal breaker. Yeah. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> so I have um, no hesitation about saying if, if yeah. I didn't have. Access to the UConn women's basketball game on Monday night, the championship game of the Big Yeah, it's, it's very interesting. The hell because, was... Yeah, the studies are starting to come out a little bit. Like you pay one hundred and fifty dollar bill or ten fifteen dollar bills um, for streaming services, and when you pay ten fifteen dollar bills, it doesn't feel like you're paying one hundred fifty dollars. Uh, a, a lot of it is already you know debited every month, unnoticeable, versus getting one cable bill every month. So. Um, it, it, the answer is not there yet. I don't think either way, frankly, there's probably some future hybrid model uh, that does both. The alternative would be very simple. If Cablevision would get its serv customer service up to any kind of reasonable speed, right. they, could, they could wipe out these uh, alternatives. Right. They've got the delivery in place and yeah, they charge a lot, but uh, you know, well, I'm guessing now that they're laying the, the fiber in systems, that's investment, right? So they've, you know, they have to, they want to keep the revenue in order to higher revenue pricing to keep the. No, well, they're, they're losing it. One way or the other. Because people are not willing to put up with the uh, hassle. 
Yeah. Anyway, I, I, yeah, it is personal. <laughs> yeah. Um, all right. I have so, no idea what I'm going to say in the notes about this this little discussion. <laughs> no, no, no. So I'd say that you know, the couple... secretary like realized he had to purse on the problem. <laughs> <laughs> So I think it's just we, you know, we had a discussion, you know, a couple follow-ups is is one is all right, how can we, is there anything the Canaan can do to help influence Altice to improve customer service since that seems to be a pain point. Um, you know, both of if people want to switch to new service, but just regular service on their existing account. Um, one. And then Paul, you brought up the what do you do about um, you know, lower income as far as giving them accessible to you know, the internet as well. I think those are two things, you know, we could bring uh, bring those up. Certainly, yeah, we could bring it up with, with Kevin and, and discuss it next month as well, because I think both of those are good. I was hoping that some discussions that Kevin and Tucker were having would, would also have involved uh, the providers of 5G services. Well, what the devil is going on? Yeah, I don't know if it's a good question. about this for eight, forever, and there are alternatives. There's long distance and yeah. you know, shorter, higher frequency service. But I have no idea what's going on. In fact, we, we had no idea. But, no, I can't say we had no idea because I had walked across the street when the cable vision guy was installing fiber optic cable across the street from me. And I had no idea that they ever connected it up. He said, we're just putting it in because I don't know when it'll ever be in there. That's the way I feel about the 5G business. I mean, what's what in fact is happening? Do we have any access to these outfits? Does Kevin had any discussions with any Chris, do you have any, Chris, do you have any insights? In no, I don't. Um, he and Tucker have had a couple of conversations with Frontier and they met with Altice, but uh, he has not had a debrief about either one of them. Um, so I think it's, yeah, the question is at Verizon or at and I mean, obviously they're talking to those guys around uh, cell tower. Maybe there's discussion with them. Yeah, yeah the at and coming on the tower out the first on the tower and then they're trying to get Verizon to piggyback with it. But um, the 5G is just not in Connecticut. And we were already told by all, all providers, you will not see that for at least a year. It's year just from, not here. A year from now or a year from a year from a year from now? No, a year from about a month ago is what I was told. <laughs> but that's why I was excited up here. I'm thinking, hey, all right, maybe all T-Mobile beat them to the punch. I see the antennas. You know, you can you, you zoom in on them. You can see their 5G. And apparently they just haven't lit them up yet. So we, um, should, move, we should move to where? Orange? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, come on up. Everybody's moving here, too. Yale's wide open now. Okay. They're buying up everything. Um, okay, any other thoughts on that? I think we, we covered that in, in good detail. So it's a topic that we'll, we'll still have to talk about for a bit since there's not an easy answer. Um, the last topic I had on the agenda was website enhancements. Um, and Paul, I know that you're on the website committee or you attend, I should say, the, I think I attend the meetings. Yeah. But, uh, the reason I asked to put it on the agenda is very simply that it's been almost two years since this, the new site got up. And when I go to these meetings, it, it almost implied that the town website committee is looking for, well, what ideas or direction or uh, goals does the technology advisory committee have for the website? And I've been simply saying, well, gee, shucks, uh, We've talked a lot about uh, you know, working on single source, uh, you know, single stream sign up, and that's beyond where they are planning at the moment. But I'm just curious about what, if anything, would we like to see them do, think about, or focus on? Um, Chris, Chris, are, there? Chris, are there any areas that you're you know, things you're hearing from other groups that um, other departments that may make sense, maybe they're not fully on board, but there's a there's some sort of pain there. Are you hearing anything? Uh, unfortunately, I'm not. Sal handles all of this. He is the webmaster and this is his kind of a domain. Um, but, you know, sitting 10 feet from him daily, there's, there's not been much going on. Um, again, everybody's been doing 
all their other thinkings through COVID and all that. I mean, it's been a totally different in- situation where they're bringing up new information. Um, but I know there's been talk of, you know, possibly a bot, which would be kind of cool. There's not a lot of municipal sites that have that. Um, mm-hmm. I'm you know, where you that? a bot where you would just type in a, you know, a request of something and it follows through, follows you through and, um, brings you to where you're looking for either answers your question or it doesn't, you know, something kind of interactive. Yeah, um, yeah, exactly. Um, kind of an automated. Uh, yeah. You're right. you, you give it the answers and you push the people in the directions you want them to go in. And okay. There you are. Um, but really not much. I'm actually texting Sal right now to find out if he's got anything. Um, what about, um, and Paul, there? he's, if he's got anything in the meetings, I, I don't think he's heard of anything new, but. Wasn't there talk of putting a ticketing system in? Is that in there? Where you can you could submit, oh, I, there's a pothole in front of my house, you know, and it would. Oh, yeah, that's already in there. Public Works is using it. Okay. Like, um, like a free one one kind of thing. Yeah, exactly. So, yeah. You know, it's, how, it's, uh, how it's functioning, I, don't, I have no idea. Paul's in the meetings. I, I don't get to the uh, web meetings anymore. That seems to be working well. There are calls. I mean, there, there's stuff coming in through the site and it's being handled quite well with the, by the public works department. That, that's actually been a bit, a bit of a plus, although I don't think it's being used by a lot of people. But the reason to bring it up was, do we have any ideas or thoughts or has anybody been using the site and found something lacking or something else that uh, we might suggest? Answer, uh, a lot of blank stares here, so that's all right. Well, I, I just I just don't, you know, I think we need to address if somebody like points out a problem, you know, then we can address it. But but if you, you just try to like figure out how could we improve, I, I'm not sure if that's a good use of our time. I mean, like if there's a problem or need or suggestion that comes from, you know, yeah. it could come the- from, Right, Emery, I agree. The only thing we've done in the past with our sites is you basically do web analytics and, and I don't know if we have access to state or we have a vendor and yes. identify that, you know, 80% of the people go to the website for five activities, right? Or eight activities. They look up a phone number or they file a complaint. And then you basically take those eight activities and you create tiles right on the front page that basically directs them exactly to where they need to go for one of those eight activities. And so uh, things about web page, web page we, just has eight, eight, yeah. go, ahead. go ahead. Yeah, we did that actually. It's like, yeah. it's there. Like we, we analyzed like what are the, what are the most likely places exactly. at that point? Because it, it wasn't, you know, it was a new site. So we didn't know necessarily. And then we put those to the front and that's a flexible system, which we can improve, put things in, take things back. So, so there you go. Yeah. Yeah. We, we don't do, I mean, it's, it's kind of, like you said, when the questions come up, when a new functionality comes on board, you revisit those metrics, but otherwise you're just, you know, it's kind of like a phone book, right? You know, the phone book doesn't change that much. <laughs> well, the hopeful the new application is to get people to be able to sign up once. Well, a single sign on is different, yeah. Any variety yeah. of things that they want. And, um, right, right. I don't know where that stands, honestly. Um, but but the analytics part, I know we've talked about it in the past. Um, Chris, does you know? Is there or Paul like? Um, not very help? revealing, Jeff. It's not re- very revealing. I mean, traffic is steady, but it doesn't. There's nothing that jumps out at you saying, you know, this is something where people need to pay attention. Yeah, normally the top the top three are uh, real estate, so you're an assessor. Um, registration or programs for recreation and now because of all the alcohols everybody's pushed to the alert page so it's the uh the covid information page um and i know the other area when we were first starting the website was around online service you know getting people to to do things on the website versus going into town hall and given they can't go now um but even in the future like avoiding it so i think we've we've hit a lot of the services the question is that you know do we need to do more promotion or whatever to get people to actually use some of these that are in there 
Um, from from my standpoint and what I see, we and without with less traffic, we're really just down to town clerk, which they're trying to resolve uh, as we speak. And as soon as that's all up online, um, all the forms are digitized now. Everybody's doing their scanning. We're getting them up under our documents on demand, and um, very little is they're making if it's not in a digital format, they're making it so that it could be, you know, we're emailing something, a permit to someone there's, there's ways around it all that everybody is now and all their departments are uh, kind of adapting. Um, and as they do that, we'll, we'll then bring them online, more fillable forms from departments. We, um, you know, stuff that should have been done 10 years ago that uh, department heads just didn't see the need for. They, they enjoyed the traffic. They knew people were coming in for whatever reason they were paying by check. So they'd see them in, you know, face to face. So it, New Canyon was slow to grow and it wasn't, it had nothing to do with the technology, mind you, it would really just, uh, people liked coming into town all, right. they, they liked the old school effect. They, for, I mean, look at now, they still come in and pay taxes. They, they walk in the door. Some come in, you know, I hate to say it, but they're, they're, they, they like to stay, they talk. Right. <laughs> <laughs> um, so, Paul, I don't think we have any, you know, I think nothing at this There's point. There's nothing but... compelling going on. I just thought that it'd be worth raising the issue. Just to... Right. So we thoughts. Yeah, so maybe all of us can, you know, we'll take a look, go in at times, um, you know, see if there is anything that jumps out at anybody. Use, I've been trying to use the online services. For instance, I pay my car taxes, um, you know, online. Um, and so via direct debit, so I charge 95 cents, but saves me a, a trip that I don't have to put it in the mail. The 95 cents versus whatever a postage stamp is today, um, 60, 50, whatever it is, cents. Um, so it's a, that's a pretty easy process. But yeah, I mean, that's maybe some area that we see the options there as well. Um, okay, so we'll, I think we we'll just keep an eye on that. And if you have anything, if anyone finds something, you know, let's bring it up and talk about it in a future meeting. Um, so those were all the things on the agenda. Um, were there any other topics anyone wanted to bring up for today or tee up for next month? No. Okay. Um, all right. Sounds good. People well, thanks everyone. It was good work on the... Um... Consolidated email project. Yeah. It's not yep, lifetime. Bob, Mike, say thanks. It's not lifetime employment, but it's. Um... <laughs> it meets I, don't need, right? <laughs> I don't know. Bob's digging in pretty deep there. His talons are right in those wood floors. <laughs> <laughs> um, all right. Sounds good. So, uh, motion to adjourn. Is there a motion on the floor? All right. Second, so I see Paul and Anna Marie. So all in favor, aye. Great. Aye. Well, thanks everyone. Um, Thank you. Enjoy. Fun as always. Yep. <laughs> thanks everyone. Take care. All right. Good night, everybody. Bye. Thank you. Thank you.